vortexes are often associated with aircraft wings or weather events like tornadoes. However, they can occur in many different ways, both in air and in water. Sometimes a moving object like an aircraft wing can create the vortex. In others, the liquid or gas is moving and the object they pass by is stationary and that creates the vortex. And this second type of vortex we can use to create something called vortex-induced vibration. So what is vortex-induced vibration and how can we make a productive use out of this effect? So a vortex is normally created when particles in the liquid or air slow down as they pass over a surface, which is either stationary or moving in the opposite direction. These particles near the surface can kind of form a cube with other slower moving particles behind them. However, further out from the surface, the particles are moving much faster. This difference in speed creates a turbulent boundary layer near the surface as some particles try to overtake the slower moving ones by moving out into the faster moving outside lane. So once the particles are past the object, there's a gap behind the object. These faster moving particles then on the outside now dash around, get round into that vacant space. It creates a spinning vortex of particles behind the object. The greater the difference in speed of the particles in the object, or the greater the density of the particles, the greater the force that's actually created by this vortex. Now sometimes the vortex-induced vibration caused by wind can be quite dramatic. The speed of the wind matches the resonance frequency of an object like a bridge. This is captured quite dramatically on the footage of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. This vibration that's caused by the vortex is rotating in one direction, pushing the object off to one side. Then a vortex forms on the opposite side, spinning in the opposite direction, and pushes it back the other way. As a result, the object rocks backwards and forwards in the same location. And so long as the rocking backwards and forwards doesn't match the resonance frequency of the object, then very little damage is actually done to the object. So it may experience stress and material fatigue as the rocking continues over an extended period of time. So how can we make best use of this vortex-induced vibration? Well, the vibration is a fairly regular movement from side to side. This kind of regular movement can be used to generate energy, especially in the form of electricity. It means that you could construct a pole anywhere that water or air flow past it. As the water or air passes the pole, it creates vortexes which rock the pole from side to side, generating electricity. This type of structure will generate electricity from wind without requiring the standard large rotating blades, so it might be less disruptive to local wildlife. In general, the engineering required to construct generator using vortex induced vibration will also be less. The generator doesn't need to be turned into the wind, it should be able to operate in any wind speed, so it doesn't need to be switched off or have brakes applied in very high winds. In addition, these types of generators wouldn't require the same huge gaps between generators that normal wind farms do. However, the key issue with a generator like this is of stress and fatigue. It could mean that they're not properly constructed and monitored these structures could fail at an unpredictable time with little or no notice during the failure. Resultant falling over or collapsing of the pole would represent extreme danger for anyone underneath it at the time. However, the general remoteness and most wind generation and the proper regulation and construction of these objects should minimise the risk involved and certainly bring it on a par with other renewable sources, making it far safer than alternative fossil fuel generation.